Hello, I'm Henry Pearson from the OECD, talking to you from the launch of the World Bank's World Development Report 2018, Learning to Realize Education's Promise. I'm very pleased to be joined by Halsey Rogers and Dion Fulmer from the World Bank. They are the co-directors of the report. I'm also joined by Andrea Schleicher, who is the head of the OECD's Education and Skills Directorate. Thank you for joining me, everyone. According to the World Bank's World Development Report 2018, we are experiencing a learning crisis. Back in the year 2000, the UN set out a series of Millennium Development Goals, the second of which is universal primary education for all. We now have more students in primary education than we've ever had before, but are they learning anything? Is there a separation between actually sitting in class and learning the skills that you need to succeed in later life? Well. We can agree that quality education and lifelong learning is deserving of all students, but are we achieving that? This is what I'm going to be talking to uh, Dion, Halsey and Andreas about. And if anyone does have any comments at any point during the broadcast, you can put them in the comments box below and we will try and get them answered by one of our speakers. So Halsey, we've established that kids might be in school, but they're not learning anything. What's going wrong? Well, thank you, Henry. You're exactly right. We have mounting evidence that schooling is not the same as learning. For example, if you look at, uh, if you test students in three East African countries in grade three, so they've been in primary school for three years, we find that if, when they're asked to read a simple sentence such as, the name of the dog is puppy, three quarters cannot understand what it means. When we test students in rural India, give them a simple two-digit subtraction problem, we find that three quarters of grade three students cannot do this problem, and once you go on to grade five, almost half cannot solve this problem. So there is a, a learning crisis, and it's also an equity crisis. We, if you test students in Cameroon at the end of primary school to see whether they've learned enough to go on to further education, about 76% of the girls in the richest, from the richest households have learned enough. It's not a great number, but at least it's 76%. For those from the poorest households, it's only 5%. So they're in school and not learning. In the World Development Report, we describe what's causing this, both in, at the school level, where children are arriving unprepared, where teachers are often not skilled or motivated, where management isn't up to the challenge, and then the deeper causes. What are the technical and political factors at the system level that are driving this problem? You mentioned students being unprepared. I will, Dion, I wonder if you could comment on that. Uh, I noticed in the report that they're saying students aren't prepared for learning. What does that mean, and, and what could we do about that? Yes, Henry, uh, th that means a number of things. Um, as we point out in the report, uh, about 30% of children under the age of five in developing countries suffer from stunting, meaning that they have been nutritionally deprived to the extent that they have low height for their age. And that's just one manifestation of the deprivations that they have. In, um, in the report, we present uh, brain scans from infants in Bangladesh. And what you can see is that for children who are from severely deprived uh, backgrounds, they have less neural connections in the brain, just making it that much harder to set them on a good development trajectory. To address this, we really have to start in the earliest of ages, so prenatal care and maternal care, um, followed up by uh, nutritional support but also family counseling so that you know good nutritional practices are established in the household and then you know in preparing for schooling then you switch more to uh, high quality childcare, which uh, has been shown to have positive impacts and then preschool uh, education that can then ease the transition from sort of the home to the more formal school environment so it seems that there was an equity issue between countries and that is manifesting itself uh, in stunting, which is, is quite shocking to hear. Andreas, as someone who's worked on PISA for so long, uh, you're probably in the best position to comment on why countries differ so much in attainment uh, for schooling. For example, why do 99% of Japanese students come out with a basic level of maths compared to only 7% of students in Mali? I was just wondering if you could comment on that. Well, first, my congratulations to the World Bank for an amazing report to highlight and articulate the learning crisis in, in a succinct way. I think that is a remarkable uh, achievement. 
Money is always part of the answer. Clearly, some of the countries do not put the resources in place that are needed, but it's only a very small part of the answer. In fact, you know, money explains only so much. It has a lot to do with political commitment and political will. We can also read this data in a positive way. You know, the fact that, for example, the 10% of the most disadvantaged children in Shanghai have better mathematics skills than the wealthiest children in the United States. So it's actually, this is not about poverty. Poverty is not destiny. You can look at countries like Vietnam with a remarkable educational success, or the progress that we have seen in Latin America in some countries. You know, uh, we look at Peru, look at Colombia. Uh, it can be done. The question is, can we do it everywhere and at its scale? I think what the report points out really well is it's also an equity crisis. Within countries, it's the disadvantaged students left behind. Across countries, there's a number of countries that really need to make headway. So we know that there's a learning crisis. We know that they're not learning, especially in poorer countries. I think I want to know, and I think a lot of people want to know, what are the policy steps that need to be taken to address that? And it's kind of a two-part question. What are the policy steps in the rich countries and in the, in the wealthier countries that it'll be slightly easier for them? And what steps can the poorer countries then take to, uh, to address this problem? Uh, Halsey, I'll start with you. Well, thank you, Henny. Uh, we think uh, perhaps some of the steps are similar. It's a difference of degrees across the low-income, the middle-income countries. It's worth saying that even in the middle-income countries, many of them are making very slow progress, if at all, and they face the same kind of equity crisis that Andreas just mentioned. Um, but what are the steps? We argue in the World Development Report that there are really three main steps. The first is assess learning to make it a serious goal. And here, certainly, we want to congratulate uh, the OECD and Andreas for doing so much to shine a light on the learning problem around the world. Um, unfortunately, many countries are not yet doing this, and, and so there are many that don't have the basic indicators uh, of learning, so it's a hidden problem, and we call it a hidden exclusion, really. Um, so assess learning. That's not enough. Secondly, you need to act on evidence. Uh, to, to make the schools work for learners. And that means in areas like teacher policy and early childhood development, there are a lot of steps you can take at the school level or the community level uh, to, to improve learning. And, and we now have much more evidence of what works, and we'll get into some of those, I think, in a minute. And then third, though, uh, what Andreas alluded to, you have to align all the actors in the system toward this goal of learning, and learning for all, learning with equity. And that doesn't happen in, in many systems. And you have to get the whole system focused. That means not just the teachers, but the politicians, the bureaucrats, the parents, the employers. Unless they're all focused on learning, unless we all agree that learning with equity is the goal, it, it doesn't happen. It's not scalable and it's not sustainable. Something I just wanted to pick up on, uh, teacher preparation has been mentioned a couple of times. It, it's not enough. I've read in the report that it isn't enough simply increasing salaries. Um, I just wanted, to, uh, Halsey, for you to comment on what can we do then? If salaries aren't enough, what can we do to prepare teachers adequately and motivate them uh, to improve the, the learning of their students? Yes. Um, you're right. Salaries are not enough. Salaries are often an important first step in in countries and systems where teachers are underpaid, it is important to make teaching an attractive profession. One element of that, though not the only one, is having salaries that are ad adequate. But we've seen in some countries uh, that they've been increased salaries, and yet because they didn't put in place these complementary steps to make sure that teachers are motivated or focused, they don't get the learning returns. Uh, we saw this in Indonesia where they doubled teacher salaries and yet we have a, a systematic evaluation that shows that that had no effect on the learning of the students of those teachers who got their salaries doubled. So you need to do much more. What are the steps? Um, one key one is to make sure that they're prepared better. Um, and, and we point in the report to the types of teacher training, teacher education that evidence suggests uh, are most effective in promoting student learning. I know the OECD has done a lot of work on this as well. Unfortunately, when we look in practice uh, at, at what works, uh, at, at whether that's being done, we find that systems don't do that. So the evidence says, for example, you want to uh, give teacher training that's well integrated with the classroom practice that's reinforced by mentors and by, by peers. In practice, often systems take teachers out of the classroom, send them away for a day or a week, send them back without any reinforcement, and hope that they will be more effective. And they aren't. 
So that, that's one example. We can support teachers much more with better management. That's another key element. There are a number of elements. The point is we need to agree that the focus is on learning and then look and use the evidence on what will actually improve teaching.